quadratic expression actually can be expressed in terms of few forms. Intercept form is where we have P and Q are eventually the X intercepts. When we take the expansion of these intercept forms, we go back to the standard forms. Meanwhile, if we do the completing the square from standard forms, they will tell us the vertex forms, where H and K straight away will tell us the minimum or maximum point. Meanwhile, if we expand back from the vertex form, they will tell us the standard forms. And one last thing is, when we factorize our standard form, they will tell us the intercept forms. Each of the form have the pro and cons. For instance, intercept form will straight away tell us what are the solutions of the equations. So from here, we know P and Q are going to be the solutions of the equations. Since they are the x-intercept and they are symmetrical, when we have P at one side and Q at another side, then we can say that the axis of symmetry is symmetry, the midpoint of P and Q. This is one piece of important information. Meanwhile, when we have vertex forms, this is eventually the equation for the axis of symmetry. Meanwhile, H and K is the vertex of the curve, which is the minimum or maximum point. Now we're going to look at the standard form of quadratic equations. So now we have AX squared plus BX plus C, where A is equal to 1, B and C both are set to 0. It basically just means Y is equal to X squared. So can you see here, this pink line is the line of symmetricals. So whatever to the left and right is exactly the same. So what if now I change the A to become something bigger? So as you can see, if I change the A to become bigger, the width of the curve is getting smaller. So it basically tells us that when the number is getting bigger, the width is getting smaller. Meanwhile, if the number is getting smaller, the width of the curve is getting larger. Can you see now it's so wide. What happens if now it becomes zero? Bam, nothing. Quadratic equations, the A cannot be zero. What happens if now getting negative? If negative, it becomes a set phase. Can you see now? The same thing when the number is getting bigger, it's eventually narrow. Whenever the number is getting smaller, it's getting wider. So it's what A is controlling. A is controlling the width and the directions. So now let us keep at one. How about B? B is the one controlling the axis of symmetricals. Can you see the pink line is getting shifted. When it's positive, means that if you have a B that is positive, the axis of symmetry is going to shift to the left. Meanwhile, if the B is a negative value, the axis of symmetry is going to shift to the right hand side. So it's the opposite of it. But this is not the case when we have the set phase. When we have a set phase, everything is go to the same directions. When B is a positive, go to the right. When B is a negative, it go to the left. So this is something that you need to take care of it. Remember, with a set phase, it's the same thing. Meanwhile, when it's a happy phase, it's go opposite directions. So lastly, we're going to look at what happened when we ch change the value of C. C is basically just a shifting in the Y axis. Can you see that? Shifting up and down. When positive is going up, when negative is going down. This is how it's shifted based on the standard form. Let us study the quadratic curve in the form of vertex. So in vertex, A is the same thing. They're controlling the width of the curve. When A is getting higher, it's getting narrow. When A is getting smaller, it's getting wider. Meanwhile, if you're negative, it becomes a set phase. But the numbers still apply when number getting bigger is getting narrow, when the number is getting smaller is getting wider. So A is controlling the width for all of the forms. Meanwhile, how about H and K? When I have a H is 4, K is 2, can you see? They tell us the coordinate of the vertex, which is the minimum point for this case. How about now I change my minimum point to become 3, 2, is it possible? Yes. So it now becomes 3, 2 and H and K is basically the combination for the coordinate of your vertex. But this H is going to controlling the X shifting left and right. Can you see? So when H is positive, they go to the right hand side. 
when h is a negative, they go to the left hand side. But this h is going to be very careful. Why? Because this is a minus sign. So basically, when h is a positive, if we see something like x minus 2. So when x minus 2, the axis is mentioned at d, x is equal to 2. When x minus a negative value, it's become a positive. So if you don't understand, let me show to you. In reality, if you see something like this, x minus 3 square, and this is a pink color line, can you see? It's eventually at x is equal to 3. Meanwhile, when x plus 5 square, which represents by the blue line, is eventually at the negative 5. Because of the negative sign here, we are eventually going to the opposite way. When you see x minus 3, we understood it's eventually it's a 3 at the symmetrical line. When x plus 5, eventually the symmetrical is at the x equal to negative 5. If you're confused, you're always going to make x minus h is equal to 0, find the x value. The x value will tell you that way is the vertex. And lastly, how about k? k is going to tell us the shifting in up and down, just like c in the standard form. When k is a positive, it's going up. When k is getting smaller, it's going down. Where if a negative means that it's shifting down, when it's positive, it's going shifted up. So now let us study the quadratic curve in intercept forms. So intercept form will tell us that where do the curve intersect and the x-axis. So for now, when p and q is 4 and 6, can you see? They eventually intersect at the x-axis at point 4 and 6. And the axis of symmetry is always the midpoint of the two intercepts. So when we have 4 and 6, the midpoint of 4 and 6 is 5. This is the line of the symmetry curves. Just find the midpoint of the two intersections will give you the axis of symmetry. How about now I shifting it? How about I say that now my root is 5 and 7. So can you see now? 5 and 7 is P and Q. We are going to tell us that where do they intersect. And the axis of symmetry is also the midpoint of 5 and 7, which is 6 for now. So this is how intercept form works. Hey, if you have any questions or would like to see any kind of video, do leave your comments below and let me know. If you want to support us so that we could make more videos like this, the simplest way is just by sharing the video with your friends. Click the like buttons and consider subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.